Greetings, I'm Gerd Leonhard, futurist in Zurich, Switzerland. A brief talk today about CAVA, Cognification, Augmentation, Virtualization and Automation. It's all driven by artificial intelligence. Cognification is to make things smart. IBM calls it, or used to call it, cognitive computing. It's computers that understand. Of course, deep learning and machine learning, but really what it means is that machines are finally able to understand the world around it to some degree. Cognification does not mean like humans fully understanding the real world, but it means to understand patterns, to be able to read data, to learn from data, to interpret data, and to have a basic sense of reasoning, you could say, a simple understanding of patterns, not causality, that is completely different, not common sense, but cognification means that we have real-time data feeds, for example, in the financial industry, that we have updates of the latest information from the pharma industry, if you're in the medical business, and so on. It simply means to make things smart. We have traditional industries going into a funnel that qualifies it, makes it smart, coming out smart the other way, like smart farming, smart government, and maybe even smart politics. <laughs> That's happening everywhere around us. That is a great benefit because when computers and data and processes are no longer stupid, we can make better decisions. So cognification, that's primarily a good thing, and that is a great feature of artificial intelligence, or should I say, intelligent assistance, IA. I prefer the word IA over AI. It seems more meaningful when we're looking at really what's happening, making things smart rather than making them intelligent like humans. The second one is augmentation, which means to amplify humans. That is, for example, language processing. So we can understand or translate other languages. We can make videos in other languages. It means augmenting our own capabilities. For example, uh, being able to see data in virtual reality with holograms or mixed reality or various virtual reality glasses. And to actually go inside of things and see it better to augment our powers to be able to read faster, for example, document summaries, drafting in the legal business, more efficient, more optimized, but also maybe having a bit more free time for other things. That's, of course, the hope. If you take cognification, getting smart, and you put augmentation on top, it means we're getting faster. So getting smarter, getting faster, more efficient, getting better at the job, maybe unearthing some free time, getting rid of the commodity work, all of us do a little bit of that one way or the other. And basically that means that we can do the job faster, but we're still very much within the human realm. We just have better tools. The third one, virtualization, means that we can go inside of a very complex scenario, like a medical scenario or manufacturing or banking or asset management, and virtually see all of the connecting pieces of data. That would be raw data. It could also be, of course, visualizations. It could be animations, it could be a, a social media feed and all that. Essentially, virtualization allows us to go inside of something and, and kind of act like we're in it. And that can be done in many different ways, with holograms, with virtual reality, with augmented reality and extended reality, XR. They allow us to see stuff completely different and to grasp things like Tom Cruise, a minority report, going inside of the data, pulling it out, slapping it on different displays and understanding stuff much quicker. So if cognification is making things smarter and if augmentation makes them faster, then virtualization is to make us see things differently. The future is not about a destination, Henry Miller said, it's about seeing things differently. And this is really important with uh, virtual reality or virtuality. We're seeing things in different contexts. We can analyze them quicker, turns us into a bit of a superhuman, you could say, with our natural senses and other senses. And of course, the Apple Vision Pro, that's a prime example of what's happening here. Spatial computing, which is another world altogether, but it relates to this whole pyramid. So that's the third one. The fourth one is automation. And many people think that artificial intelligence is primarily about automating things. And I, I don't think that's entirely true. I think automation can be achieved at times when it's really okay to do all of that without human input, without human judgment, without common sense, without real life understanding. Machines don't live in real life, they live in digital life. To automate things based on that, I think it's a pretty tough mission. It has been accomplished, of course, in factories, 
sometimes in e-commerce, sometimes in customer service, which is the number one turf right now for automation. If you have very, very simple questions, you can get very, very simple answers. And if that's your business, then automation is 90% of it sooner or later. So automation is at the top of this pyramid. That is the last instance of the benefit of AI. But if we're working our way up, I think we're looking at roughly 70 to 80% of benefit of AI being in the lower part of this, making things smart, make them faster and better, augmenting our own capabilities, not replacing us, allowing us to visualize what's going on around us much, much better, much deeper, and then possibly automating responses. Again, in the financial industry, like credit and risk checking and compliance, all of these things that we have to do every single day in certain jobs, that could be automated depending on what it is. I don't think that's the primary benefit. I think if we're looking just for efficiency and optimization, there's a good chunk below that. But really what all of those four things do is they allow us to find time to do other things. And that is, of course, the purpose and the understanding and the development of new ideas, the creativity, the agility, the resilience, all the things that we can't do when we're so busy with just the basics. I think what AI does and the Kava principle does is it allows us to create space for new things and to discover new things and gets rid of the commodity work. Sometimes it really feels like we should keep it because it makes us feel safe. But maybe we can outsource that and have that work done if it doesn't require human input, if it doesn't require emotions, consciousness, human agency. That's when we can automate. To set and forget, that is a difficult mission in most cases, as we can see with self-driving cars. So I advise all of my clients not to spend all of their time are looking at automation because it seems like we can save things there and save staff, which is kind of a weird angle and probably not the most worthy approach. But to look at all the other things based on cognification, augmentation, virtualization, and see how we can get better with all of this and find free time and create new possibilities. And of course, improve collaboration also within the team. And first of all, maybe make our workers more happy with what they're doing without having to dig through mountains of commodity work every day. So that's my take on Kava, cognification, augmentation, virtualization, and automation, and how it all relates to artificial intelligence. I hope you enjoyed the short comment. Please share the video, hit the subscribe button and the notify bell, and see you here for the next show.